Hi, I'm Heather Dodds. Welcome back to Ion Harness Racing, presented by Trackmaster. Some of the sport's most historic Grand Circuit stakes will be raced over the next two weeks in Lexington, Kentucky. While in Delaware this past week for the Little Brown Jug, Grand Circuit President John Campbell took time to give John Pavlock an update on the state of the Grand Circuit. John, it's been about a year since you took that post. Has it been rewarding, frustrating, a uh, little bit of both? What? Oh, a little bit of both. I mean, you're, you're always trying to do different things, and it's very difficult to make changes when there's so many entities involved. Uh, you're dealing with so many different racetracks. And so some of that has been uh, frustrating, but uh, at the same time, I was aware of that when I took, uh, took the job and the responsibility. Um, you know, I've got a great board that works with me, and uh, I can't say enough about them. They do uh, all the legwork and... Uh, uh, you know, Nick Salby, Carol Kramer, Paul, uh, Paul Ramlow, they do just a, a, a tremendous job uh, getting the word out. And I, I think we've increased the exposure of the Grand Circuit this year. That's what our aim was at uh, the meeting there last year at Lexington, and I think we've done that. Uh, you know, I've said a few times, we're, we've got a limited budget and no power, so we, there's certain things we can't get done. But, you know, we want to continue to push and prod the racetracks to, to market and advertise and, and make the open stake and grand circuit experience, you know, for the fans and the horsemen as good as it can possibly be. You talked about racing on half-mile tracks, and I know NASCAR pays lap money. You were talking about paying at each of the four poles. Tell us what your concept is and how it would work. Well, it's just something I thought of. I, I, don't, I don't know if it would work. It would be something if I was running a, a half-mile track that I would try uh, in, a, you know, not all the races, obviously. I'd try it in a, a select few and see how it worked. But I'd pay a, a, a bonus if you were in front at the quarter, another bonus if you were in front at the half, and another bonus uh, at the three-quarters. And if you went wire to wire, you got, uh, you got four extra bonus uh, payments. And uh, I think it would really increase the the fractions to the half if a guy got parked and he could get his nose in front for that bonus money at the half it would uh, really make the races interesting I think but it might not work but it would be something I, I would try and I would think if I were betting a closer I'd feel pretty good at that point well that's what you're trying to do is, is bring more variables into the race for the gambler and more, when you bring variables in you're bringing more value um, you know when a six to five horse goes to the front on a half mile track it's not a very bettable race and it's not a very interesting race to watch but if Somebody thinks they could get paid, and by you know taking the lead at the half, it would change the the whole outlook of the race, and you wouldn't see as the fractions uh, as soft in the middle. What's left on your bucket list? Hall of Fame, leading money winner all time, Little Brown Jugs, Hamiltonians galore. What's left to do for John Campbell? Well, you, you know every year is a different challenge. Every year you're different with dealing with different horses and different people, and you know that's what keeps everything fresh. Um, I still love horses. I, I still like being around them. Uh, it's it's great when you get a hold of a good one that can really go, and uh, you have so much admiration because you know there's so many of them that just don't have the talent or ability or the will. And when you get a good one, it's really it's still rewarding, and that's what I look forward to every year. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to ignore you, but I've got something here in my iPad I want to show you. Something new from Hoofbeats just for you. It's our all new edition of Hoofbeats Direct. If you have an iPad such as this, an Android tablet, any device that gets to the internet, you'll have this. The nice thing about it, whereas before it was simply a PDF file that showed a picture of all the pages, every one of these, you saw the uh, links come up, is a link directly to a story. Hoofbeats Direct will come with special content, links to slideshows, and video, for example, interviews with the newsmakers each month things you'll find nowhere else. They'll be exclusive to you in your copy. And the best thing is, if you have Hoofbeats delivered to your home each and every month, you can have the online version, as you see here, at no additional charge. But you do need to have an online services account. Visit myaccount.ustrotting.com to register. One man who follows the Grand Circuit more than any other is my colleague and Grand Circuit Publicity Director, Paul Ramblow, who has this week's edition of Paul's Paddock Picks. The Bluegrass Stakes for two and three-year-olds of both sexes and gates will be racing this weekend at the historic Red Mile. On Saturday, there will be two divisions of the Bluegrass for three-year-old pacing Colts. The first division features Captain Treacherous, who looks to keep his record-setting season going underway. However, the race I want to look at is the second division. That'll be the most contentious of the two. Uh, the morning line favorite should be Sunshine Beach, who won the Battle of the Brandywine. Sunshine Beach, of course, the only horse to defeat Captain Treacherous this year. However, he will face a stern test from a couple horses that raced really well at the Little Brown Jug last week. 
We have Resistance Feudal out of the two hole. He won a first heat elimination out of the jug. And then we also have Urbanite Hanover scoring from post position five. He cut the mile and then finished second in the jug second heat. I think those two horses will give Sunshine Beach all he wants. It should be an exciting finish at the end. But I'm going to go with the Blair Burgess trainee, Resistance Feudal. He made a big move in the second heat of the jug before breaking and going off stride. I think he'll get the job done this week in the bluegrass. I'm Paul Ramlow for Paul's Paddock Picks. Trackmaster's Harness Pro is the most unique and powerful harness handicapping tool available on the market today. There is no software to download or install, simply and easily handicap from any PC, Mac, or tablet computer using a web browser. Visit TrackMaster.com to become a Harness Pro. And TrackMaster has again provided us with the Platinum Picks for the Ion Harness Racing Race of the Week. Here are this week's TrackMaster Platinum Picks for the Bluegrass Stakes 2-year-old Colt Trot at the Red Mile. Harness handicappers, this one's for you. Trackmaster Harness Pro is the most unique and powerful handicapping tool dedicated to harness racing on the market today. It's a combination of all the features found in sophisticated handicapping software, all conveniently presented as a web-based, all-in-one handicapping utility. The only product you'll ever need. Trackmaster Harness Pro has these exclusive features. Top performers, graphs, power ratings, sortable statistics, PDF race programs included, TrackMaster is your complete source for harness racing information, TrackMaster Harness Pro for the serious player. Time trials have diminished in popularity in recent years, but made a bit of a comeback this past Monday at the Meadows, where noted thoroughbred jockey Chantel Sutherland Cruz was up on DW's NY Yank to attempt a North American under saddle record on a 5 8 mile track. Our video crew was there. I'll let you go by yeah. yourself. Will he run off on me? You know, like. Our horses, sometimes you can't stop them. No, no, that's what they say. By he's pull? perfect. Okay. He's per you're right. Remember here, we here we run with a tight line almost all the time. Oh, so he's gonna he's gonna be. I mean, he, like you're just gonna have hold of him. Yeah. Okay. Just, okay. You're not. He's he's not gonna fight you. Okay. But that, the only thing is that's why I don't want to go with you because I would go with you with the other prompter. Him too much. But as soon as he feels the prompter, then he'll want to go. Okay. You know, as long as he's by himself, I don't think you'll have any issue. Here, these horses, he'll take this foot, and when he's traveling, it'll go back here and hit that leg. Oh wow. But it's not like. You can see he's not got like injuries yeah. or things. Do you have pink ones? No, he's wearing black boots. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting black boots, that's it. <laughs> he doesn't have pink boots. <laughs> you go around here, she just ready. Is there cold? That's ready? the first quarter. That's yeah, the first quarter. quarter. And if I break before then, I can stop. Yeah. And then what do I do? Him Pull him up. Turn around. I try to turn him around because if you keep yeah. him going the right way in the track, he'll be on fire. He'll be, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. He'll be on the Just pull him up and go back around. Okay. So just to Bill? To Bill, to Bill. Uh, Sean okay. Bell. Hi Larry, uh, how are you? Nice, nice you. to meet you. I bet Hi. You're you were here to get my skirt suggested? Yeah, you want me to go up right now. Me, you want. There you go. It's lighter than I thought. Oh, that rain's not very long, eh? I can give you a little more. Okay, thanks. It's amazing, he just stands. <laughs> Okay, well, I watch for the water trucks and wagons, too. What? There's water trucks and wagons going while you're out there. Okay. They so, won't scare them, though? No, no, they won't bother you. Just don't run in there. Wide open. I didn't want to go with you. I wanted to, but I was afraid I'd pull up too much. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. Will he just go when you get him? Okay. He'll go. When you turn him out there, he'll go. You can let him go where you want to go. Hey Chantel, that was your first ride on a standard bread. Tell me how it went. Incredible. Like I, I was really amazed at how smooth and good it feels. And uh, the horse is really sound. And um, they're very acute to like the noise. Like I asked him to whoa, because the third uh, thoroughbreds you can sometimes get them to whoa or slow down and calm them with your voice. Instead it was the opposite. The tip -off. <laughs> what are some of the differences between thoroughbreds and standardbreds that you found now? You know, I can't decide in my mind if it's the environment that they're so used to the trucks and the cars and the people and 
you know, like the little go kart was going straight at a horse, and he came straight right by us, and they didn't, they don't mind. I don't know if it's because standard breds work so much and just get them, you know, so desensitized to all that stuff. But uh, thoroughbreds are very different. Like you can't make a lot of noise, and a vehicle can never be on the track at the same time. You have a thoroughbred. They see a lot more, and they spook at everything. So I was more spooked than the horse. You know, <laughs> it's amazing. Well, we're in motion, and the prompters are going to go with BW's New York Yank. Opening quarter in a very slow 31 seconds. In that mile at Pocono, 28 and 1 is the opening panel. The tempo is picked up. BW's New York Yank lengthens the strides. Lone and Burke, the trailers with the prompters. That's one of the rules in time trials. If the horse makes a break, it is a losing effort. The time, 2.05 and 2. A lot of different advice from a lot of different people right now. No, everyone's being really cool. Even all the drivers, um, they're all being really cool and explaining how you just keep the bit in their mouth. And uh, I mean, I really hope that I can, can do it. <laughs> mile uh, somewhere around 205 and they're off for a possible North American record and DW's New York Yank makes a break and thus it is a losing effort they may decide to try it right away since they only went about an eighth of a mile. Two off and racing, going right out. DW's New York Yank this time, Chantel Sutherland Cruz. Into the turn on top of the prompter by about seven lengths. As they go over to the first eight, under 15 seconds this time. DW's New York Yank has a mark of 151 and 3 at Pocono earlier this year. World record at Yonkers, 54 and 3 on the half. Opening quarter at 28. The timing's perfect this time for DW's New York Yank. At Pocono, they went over the quarter in 28 and 1, this time 28 flat for DW's New York Yank. Down the stretch they come. Chantel, Southern Cruz, DW's New York Yank. Let's bring them home. Going to beat 159 and 1. I'll give you credit for sticking to it. <laughs> you sticking to it. That was awesome. Unbelievable. Great job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> How do your arms feel? Tired. It's amazing that it's like a, and it's not like a give and take pull. It's a solid two minutes you're going to be pulling hard, 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 as hard as you can. Okay, you got down to the half in 57 and a piece there. You were going pretty well in the second. In the second half, did the, did the horse get tired or did you get more tired? I get tired. That, so I get tired in the second part and I started to give my arms a rest a little bit. And when I loosened up, he started to stop like it's over and then so I took another hold and held on again and then then he picked it up again and then Dave was like go 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 so and even when it's so weird for us jockeys because we want to let go and hit and you can't you just gotta sit there holding and screaming yeah. the jugs loss was Hoosier Park's gain Six other sophomore Colts provided the competition, but the captain had a clear lead at each call and sped to a 149-4 win with Tim Tietrich in the bike. They pass the eighth pole. Captain Trentress just cruising along here as he extends the lead. He's out there by three. Duel of the Sun to the inside. Chasing in second. That'll be the Ray. And to the outside, blatantly best, but it is Captain Trentress. Dave Pallone joined an exclusive club earlier this week when he reached the 16,000 win plateau. Joining Germany's Heinz Waring, who with 16,689 career wins, is the only other driver to pass that lofty mark. 
We send our congratulations today for this great accomplishment. What a gamble with the lead of Rod Mendale on the outside. DM Big Dog Daddy third on the outside. T Boone down the stretch. What a gamble the leader. Lightning Lane. DM Big Dog Daddy on the outside of Rod Mendale. DM Big Dog Daddy number 16,000 for Dave Pelon in the Lightning Lane. That's it for this week. I'm Heather Dodds, and I'd like to thank Paul Ramlow for his contribution to this week's show. Next week, John Pavlock will return to focus on the Kentucky Futurity for sophomore trotters. Thanks for joining us, and see you next week.